guys, today we're going to be coming back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, I gotta show you something before I start this episode. One minute, guys. So guys, one, uh, if you haven't seen it yet and you just clicked on the video too fast, make sure you go back and check that thumbnail. If you wonder where I got the thumbnail, um, uh, I think you can see it. Because, I mean, they did some pretty dank memes in this chat, but, I mean, it's been like, I, I, I've been getting pestered about, see, I have 10 hours, so here you go guys. So let's get right back into this guys, yes it has been a while, and um, wow it's October 20. Really? I'm sorry. Okay, so, entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi X-Men. Yo Soror. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to be being in our club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway, huh? Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Huh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayora? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah, ah. Sarah nervously retrieves for Quinn first. He fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she tears it upside down and lets it kind of spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sarah. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money to get in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming in the club room. So either you're not hungry, and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I'd lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ooh, ah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. You feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. The face is in a book, as always. Ah! Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell X-Men to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that. <laughs> Besides... You should only buy what you could responsibly for. And frankly, after pulling a mysterious little cell like that, your suffering is about a fair enough retribution. <laughs> Uh, uh, did I just, I, I didn't mean that I got too absorbed in my book. You, uh huh? I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's, there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That, still coming from your sailor, huh? I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayara knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it was just for cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayor. <laughs> I just slapped her! Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks you in the face and tumbles under the desk. Well, I didn't slap her, okay. Oh, what was... Huh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Where's mine? Sarah glances around. I, is this a miracle? <laughs> it's because I paid my retribution. My, res my restitution. Retribution? Actually, that one almost worked. Ah! <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about cu the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Uh huh? Of course, Natsuki. N Natsuki? That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sarah hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sarah rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Takes one bigger than me. Hmm? Sarah suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. I hate when that happens, boy. 
going through a lot over oh, just one cookie. That Suki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, that Suki. Can I try it? It's gonna be like, um, one bite. She's gonna take one bite, it's gonna be like Jaws ripping open the cookie. Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shaved this one with me. Uh -huh. By the way, I don't remember any of the context, so I don't know what, what, what happened last time. This is all, like, I hope this is all new. If not, that's alry. Sarah gets out of her seat and goes behind Izuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, as if he reaches up to nudge Sarah off of her. Oh. Sarah suddenly leans in and takes it. <laughs> Six of five out of Natsuki's cookie. <laughs> hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful of cigarette trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're just a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayora? Huh? That took you guys around. Monica is in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her like, being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's probably pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Not to your boy. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super, super sorry. <laughs> super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all? You're so strong-willed. <laughs> boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glanced around at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kinda just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have heard the bell ring, at least? I must not have heard it since I was- I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played so much, much music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. I kinda just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Michael looked at me. Maybe once I get a little better, a bit better I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, next man. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure in there, but... Uh huh? Don't worry. I've practiced a lot, a whole lot recently, and I literally love to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No. Not not really. I chose to leave Sayora's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Nizuki will end up playing to her anyway. It looks like everyone has settled down. Sayora somehow already finished her entire cookie. And I wanted something much. Yuri's back to her book and Nizuki disappeared into the closet. And pulls out a skeleton! Dun dun dun. X-Men, X-Men! Sarah suddenly comes up to me. I better get some, go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up? Me and Monica, we're gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with X-Men to get some supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with them. <laughs> Aw, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Heh, <laughs> okay, okay. But we just assessed her. See if you can find some poster papers too, okay? Okay. Ready, X-Men? Yep, let's go. Sayora and I exit the club room. I haven't seen the freaking hallway in a long time. I follow behind as Sayora hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly? It feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sarah finds pleasure in the simplest things at sometimes. 
Hey, Sayora. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Huh? <laughs> Me and Monica have well planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's gotta take turns on the stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds kinda dull? X Men! You're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem, like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, playing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to when? But to what ends have I summoned the story? For now, when I look at it in every direction, the once precious feel before me is but a barren wasteland. Oh, is but a barren wasteland? Like that? Sayora. Let me put this. I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? I know, I know. I just meant it, but it's pretty unordinary to contrast your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, uh, I'm so excited. The festival's gonna be so much fun. Sarah spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, X-Men, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin this, this the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Sayora like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. And play more games. So going adventuring with Sayora brings about a special sort of feeling that I forgot I had in me. Kawaii! Ugh. <laughs> the two of us enter the classroom. Sayora heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayora pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayora starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the post paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Kia? Sarah bends over and smacks her forehead right into a shell. She falls to the floor and crayons spill all over her lap. Oh, 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 oh. You okay? My forehead. Sarah clutches her forehead. Geez, Sayora. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sarah is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her up out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sarah. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sarah slowly raises her hand from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. That's a cool box of crayons, by the way. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Thanks, man. Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> even wincing from her pants, he already makes a silly joke. Haha, <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I should have I should have came back sooner. I think I'm gonna play a lot of this today, maybe. I just in that, you know, sort of mood or something. I pat Sarah on the shoulder and run out of the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it would be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sarah likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sarah. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other one, the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sarah here. I hands over the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sarah opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sarah, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah. Uh, wow, I didn't even see that she had it. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Huh? How hard did you hit your head? Sarah places the bottle against the bottom of her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayon. That's good. Hey, X-Men. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. 
Like I usually fell behind or had some trouble climbing on things you did. But sometimes when I try to do things that I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself, I'd get a bump, and I would start crying really hard. Uh huh? And you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and you were getting afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kinda like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wanted to fix your head. X-Men? I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm out just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. X-Men? I'm so glad that nothing changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? I'm honest to myself. There's no telling where we'll end up. Each end up for college or after that. So it would be fair of me to make any promises, but... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so... My hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sarah has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sarah hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. You... Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. This music. I fall Sierra out of the classroom. Sierra plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump, but without me, she says. In a moment, we make it back to the classroom. Now, if she had these bangs, maybe she could. Wait. I think she has longer hair than me. Does she? I don't know. Been saying the comments below with longer hair. I don't know. Ah, uh, you're back. Good timing. I was about to start with sharing our poems. Eh? Sayora, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about I was playing with a crayon to smack my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway. <laughs> were you able to find everything that we knew? Uh-huh, I have it right. Uh huh? Sayora frankly glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayora. I have it all right here. Found the post paper, too. Uh huh? Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, x -Men. Uh, well, Sayora... I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayora. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. Uh huh, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters then. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Alright, this time, who should I show my poem? Since, like, Sayora and I are getting a little bit closer, let's go to Sayora first. X-Men? I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But, your poems are so good. Yes, Jace, and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the one, only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way. Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki's the least likely to admit how she made it. How much she likes something. I don't think that's that it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems than thinking about you. But, eh? What? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, you idiot. I just mean that you're really an expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can feel through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. 
You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sewer? I pat Sewer's head. Huh? Hey. I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Mmm, maybe. Sarah starts filling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, X-Men? Will you give me your poem? I kinda wanna keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something to me. Uh-huh. Sarah, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> uh -huh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we get home. Really? Snap. Uh, ah! I broke my pencil. Sarah hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inactive over surroundings, she bumps right into me. So sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sarah clutches the desk behind her to support herself, knees shaking. I I'm a little clumsy today. Uh -huh. Let's sit down, Sayor. Yeah. I grab Sayor's arm and help her to sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh. Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Gee, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Let's see. Bottles. I pop off my... Pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. This is my new. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside them with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle and to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes a lot of friends. Each bottle of starlights make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hidden in them. Roots and candies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle, my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like the time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. Some more. My friends look through my lock front door. Finally, all done, I open up. And then come my friends, and then they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frankly pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it, shatter it shatters against the, the the between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who weren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's weird. Holy crap. Sarah, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday that I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate, uh, passionate about this, haven't you? Huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing up until I die. Ah, uh -huh. don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week late. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, now let's go to... Let's go to Natsuki. Miss Cookie herself. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Huh? Whew. What? Ah, well, anything that is a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Ah, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well, then keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me one day. That's, uh... Something tells me as Nizuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sarah is a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so er-fluffy 
spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging you around a dead weight. There, you just flamed me. I'm triggered. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way: if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away over like letting go balloons. You could say that we sh we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to read my poem here. Let's see. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite song, love song. Each time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me up to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends like start to like spiders too? <sighs> Good. Ugh. That's why I'm not. So it was too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't. If it doesn't hurt anyone, she, it's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. What is this? This is why you're the weird, cute one. Not bad, right? It's quite a longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. You mean too short like you? Oh! I didn't even think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt it. I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree with the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks might. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid that other people find out. They make fun of you and or think less of you. But they just makes people stupid. Who cares what that someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking good things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I can, I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. Uh, let's do let's do the club leader last. Let's see your let's see what you've written right there. Hmm. Well done, X Men. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Huh? It, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to do to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you could see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have a well an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this a poem you're afraid of? Yuri nods, so and Timely hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in that dead of night while I was slicing freak, slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. As my subconscious well aware of, my, of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The interesting beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon. On page, wait, I don't know. I think that says, in, in urge, there we go, okay, I'm stupid. The moon inscrements its phase and neglects, or in reflex that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of, the raccoon, of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Uh, perhaps I'm merely pro projecting my emotions with the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken the, to the following, following me. You could say that we've gotten get quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time 
I brandish my cutting knife. The red room shows me its examiner. A rush of blood. Classic fashion finishing. Slice the bread, and I would feed myself again. Hey! 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 Okay, stop. There you go, thank you. See? Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that people, different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more my in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Huh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Ah, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you do have that in common. That's... That's, well, more interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who make fun of my hobbies. And I suppose it's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, please don't tell her I said that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I have no reason to. Oh my god, cats, stop climbing everywhere. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would have probably ate myself. I, I might be raining up a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Alright, now let's do the club leader. Hi again, X-Men. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh-huh. I wanna count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayora. I like that one yeah, you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. The dynamic duo. Oh. Uh huh, that's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. Uh, I'm not shy, it's just. Uh huh, I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them a share of time. You can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this room turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. See me. Wait, no, save me. The colors, they won't stop. This is my jam! This music is- this game is lit. Sorry guys, I just had to say that. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. An endless... Cacophony? Cacophony? Sounds like a bird. A meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveforms. Speaking, screeching, piercings. S sign, consign, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Ah, oh, I get it. Save and load. Okay, that's cool. Is that kind of like... I remember it's, this is still a horror game, quote unquote. But I don't see the horror aspect. Like, I get the poems are kind of deep and dark. But, like, they're just expressing their feelings. That's nothing scary. Hmm. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? Uh huh. I guess it's just the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the move of poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, until really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's so hard for me to see what it's about, though. Uh huh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. 
So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh, you guys get ready for Monica's writing tip of the day. You know, you, you this is why you came to the video. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> you never know when you might change your mind. I want something unexpected to happen. Wait, is that tipping about writing? I think I should save my game now. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Wait, is this tipping about writing? What am I even talking about? Uh huh? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. It save your games frequently, guys. That was about everything. Just like in Sims, if your game crashes and you didn't save, your entire house is gone. Okay, everyone. Well, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today. So if everyone can come to the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with, with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much much more than a few decorations. Sora has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for that event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica? Yeah? Yeah, we're gonna have a poetry performance. Each of us are gonna choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also gonna let someone else come up and recite poems too. Sarah's putting it all on small posters, all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sarah, who's been coloring a poster, pulls it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting out the posters up, did you? Eh? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't stand up for it, you know? There's no way I'm going to perform in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, your shakes red in fear. Guys? No, Sayor. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri had never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. I still have to ask them what it's supposed to allow you to all the table. Oh, good. To all room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give our best. We're the only responsible for the Fairies Club. If we start the event, each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people will perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's the re those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to have the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. If it all takes is standing in front of the room and for two minutes reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sierra looks, roy looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sierra and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll have, just have to get over with. Alright! Whew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri didn't. Deject and glances around at everyone else's expected faces. <sighs> I I guess I don't really have a choice. Huh? That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want you to choose a poem of your own. We're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No 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 way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poems in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh huh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebooks to split poems she has in order, as in mind for herself. And we'll see what poem she chooses in the next video. In the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, like the video, comfortable, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you know you hit that little bell. Um, 
if you want to get notifications when I upload. If you guys like the series, make sure you know you tell me in the comments below, or just you know spam me, and say upload more, and uh, so guys, watch guys, do all that, and um, I'll see you guys next video. Let's watch guys. This is turning out really freaking cool.